Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Monday Night Must See TV with the Hudson Valley Squares, along with Martin Popoff. We've got Steve Keeler, Sidney Taylor, Butch Jones, Ryan Scow, and Chris Allo. Today, we have arrived to 1975. So last week on In the Prague Seat, uh, myself and the crew talked about our favorite Prague albums from 1975. Today, we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit and pick maybe our favorite rock or hard rock or metal or whatever from 1975. I've asked everybody to uh, give it their five favorites from that year. But before we start off, because Martin's in the house, how about a little recap of kind of what happened in 1975, Martin? All right. So I've made a few notes on 75. So here we go. So, uh, so 1975 in sports, we've got Golden State Warriors beating Washington Bullets four games to nothing uh, for the NBA championship. The Flyers, the good old Broad Street Bullies, uh, one, one of my favorite teams that year. We followed all those guys all the time, even though I was a big Buffalo Sabres fan, joined their fan club, actually. Um, and the Flyers beat Buffalo uh, that year for the Stanley Cup. Steelers over Vikings, Cincinnati Reds over the Bo Sox. In movies, we had uh, Jaws, The Towering Inferno, Godfather 2, uh, Murder on the Orient, Return of the Pink Panther. Um, best picture uh, for the Academy Award was One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, the Who Tommy, uh, the movie came out that year. I thought it was earlier than that, my whole life, uh, but no, that's, I guess that's when it came out. Um, Jimmy Hoffa disappears. Uh, there's the start of the battle between VHS and beta Vietnam war ends. Uh, Margaret Thatcher is the leader of the conservatives over in the UK. Patty Hearst becomes mo uh, FBI's most wanted Apollo Suez joint mission. There's that one. Uh, 9.2% unemployment. I guess we had a bigger a recession at that time. President Ford, remember, taken over for Nixon for a short time there. So recession, inflation. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. President Ford signs a $2.3 billion loan to save New York City from bankruptcy. Um, Saturday Night Live debuts. Muhammad Ali beats Joe Fraser. Thriller, thriller in Manila. Yep. And the biggest TV shows of that year were $6 million Man, Kojak. The Jeffersons, All in the Family, Mod, Good Times, Mash, and the Carol Burnett Show. Wow, great stuff! And about eighty percent of those shows you just listed, you couldn't make right now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Totally <laughs> could not make them. And in twenty twenty one, and Jimmy Hoffa is still missing. Yeah, I guess I haven't found him yet. Uh, and New York City also needs another bailout, so they don't go bankrupt, guys. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, so we're going to do ladies first tonight. So Sydney's going to kick us off with her uh, picks from 1975. We'll go Sydney, Martin, Steve, uh, Chris, Ryan, Butch, and then we'll get Lynn's picks as well, and then I'll finish everybody off. So uh, Sydney, what do you got? All right, so um, this is going to be a pretty basic list because I thought that we were doing title tracks this week until like earlier today. So we're going for some of the easier or maybe more obvious picks, but that's fine. That's cool. Um, also, I don't have many props with me, so that's that. Um, but the first album I'm going to go with is Face the Music by ELO. Um, I, I love ELO. I've talked about them before on you know, this channel and everything, but I love ELO. Um, Evil Woman is one of, you know, their biggest songs, but just such a great song. Strange Magic, Knight Rider, just, it's it's a great record. Um, and ELO is like my go-to when I put on a kind of like feel good music, if you want to feel good. So first one, Space and Music by ELO. Um, my number four, I'm going to go with the self-titled Fleetwood Mac record released in 75. Um, I like Rumors a little bit better than this album, but I still love this album a lot. You know, it's got Landslide, it's got Rhiannon, um, it's, you know, it's still a great record from, you know, beginning to end. And it's definitely where they started to get their kind of ground and, and really get themselves to where they were for Rumors. So that's my number four. Kind of a package deal, those two albums, right? It's like you couldn't have one without the other, I don't think. No, no. I mean, like I said, I like, I think that Rumors is definitely like if I had to pick one Sure. album by Fleetwood Mac to like if to send to somebody and be like this is Fleetwood Mac I would definitely pick Rumors but I think the the self-titled has great songs on it as well I think that Rumors is a little bit higher on the the totem pole than than the first one but uh the self-titled but I think that that one's a great record you um, have to find someone that doesn't own uh, Rumors because I think how many copies of that album sell it's like uh how many tens of millions uh, insane I, I think it I think Rumors just ended up getting back on the 
it's like again on like the top the billboard top 200 again i think it's like in the like 30 or 33 again it's like wow that high up yeah, yeah. well it had that resurgence last year when that tiktok thing happened and okay yeah. cranberry juice had the whole thing and so now it's on it's like number 33 or, or last time i looked because i came amazing on the top 200 yeah it's it's crazy but uh, i i know as a record store owner uh you can't keep it in stock and right now you can't even get it it's <laughs> like been back ordered like crazy and even my distributor goes we'll get in a thousand of them and they're out the door and then we gotta wait a few months and get them in again and that's how backed up things are now with that but that's one of the top sellers in rock fantasy for sure yeah, so i gotta ask chris allo have you ever owned rumors you really have to ask that pete <laughs> how many copies I, I can't believe problem. you've never listened to that record. It's it's just mind blowing yeah. to me. I mean, it's, yeah. See, there's, I guess, see, Ryan, there's the one right there. Yeah. Nope. I mean, I, you know, I guess I can I can tell you the songs off I heard off the radio, but at no. this point, though, don't break that trend. Keep it going. Yeah. Oh, now listen, you can't. Listen to it. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I never saw Spaceballs until like four or five years ago, and really? I saw it and I fucking hated it. And all these people are like, "What's wrong with you?" I'm like the movie's not funny at all. I'm like, but maybe I maybe, if I, maybe if I saw it like 35 years ago, maybe I would have thought it was funny. But yeah, I think if I listen to rumors now, it's probably it's probably over my head. So I'm sure it's really good though. It's like my over your head. That, that's a, that's a song by Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's yeah. on the album that Sydney was just talking about. by Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> all right, uh, my number three. I'm gonna go with an obvious one. Physical graffiti great record i mean there's really there's really nothing bad to say about this album um it's really cool because i'm sure i don't know if any of you have too i mean we all are in the new york area but i've actually gone and seen the actual building that i i believe it's i'm not sure if it is saint mark's place it is. Or right mark's off saint place. mark's place yep. yeah I've, I've seen the actual uh building which is like the coolest shit in the world like to see that in real life um so if you're in new york city or you never been and are going to go that's a place to it's go still there. Like, i saw it probably like eight or nine years ago but when i was there it was still it looked yeah. identical to the album cover it hadn't changed at all pretty close pretty close yeah yeah it's it stayed the same i mean there's like a there's like a tea shop or something in one of these things or something when you go down um but it's pretty i pretty identical and it's like almost mind-blowing to like look up and see it and you're like looking at the album cover and looking at the building and it's just like it's Legendary. crazy but i mean it's just in my time of dying houses of the holy cashmere custard pie i mean this is just there's nothing bad to say about this album it's just fantastic so um how to go in my top three for sure um number two i didn't pull out my prop for this one but i have to go with toys in the attic aerosmith um you see me crying is one of my favorite aerosmith songs of all time excellent it's such a great song um it's funny i have this conversation with my dad all the time like that song is if you would have taken like the overproduced stuff and stuff in the eighties, like angel, like that's like that song, like raw roots. Like it's, that's like the beginnings of that. And it's such a, such a great ballad. Um, you just can't go wrong with that album. It's probably my favorite in the string of those seventies eras with records. I mean, I love rocks too, but toys in the attic is probably my number one. So I, I love that record. Um, and then my number one, I mean, were we kidding? I had somebody tweet me that they were going to know today, that they were going to know what my number one was. I mean, duh. Of course. Duh. <laughs> um, I mean, this is the one of the records that for me really like was just so instrumental of me becoming like a diehard Alice Cooper fan. Like I love the stuff with the early band, of course. Some of those are my favorite songs, but like this album I remember was one of the first that I really was just like, on repeat for me all the time um and it's really funny because alice signed this one for me and when he was signing this for me i was like 14 or 15 and he looked at me and he was like you know what these are right these are called records and i was <laughs> like yeah i bought this one but i know what they are <laughs> um but he signed this for me and um it's actually a pretty crappy copy because it was like right when i was you know where i got this from rock fantasy crappy <laughs> copy from rock fantasy guys that's all he sells is crap <laughs> that's what I heard. it's not in the best shape like if you look at this i think it was but you were selling it for like it was like like three or four bucks yeah, like, yeah. Weren't like you know what i mean I you knew it was not Bargain a great prices. copy yeah. Bargain prices. 
Chris but, Allen, you be quiet. All right, Chris. I'm just busting your chops. <laughs> you wouldn't sell it for three, four bucks today, that's for sure. <laughs> But, but like that, it you know, it was, I bought it because it was like the first record that in school's out, which you should have charged me way more for, and you didn't. That was a first pressing. You yeah, should have you know, charged me. Oh, so buy good. stuff cheap, we sell stuff. Cheap. We don't try to gouge. <laughs> you know, that's how it worked for many years. But it's fine now. Plus, you know, plus of someone like Chris Allo, someone with a lot of money. Charge me more. That's you know, it. We, we change it around all the time. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it still had the original, like, you know, like lyric sheet and everything. I mean, it. I knew what I was getting when I bought it, but at the time I didn't care because I was just like, you know, it was like my first, one of the first records I ever bought. And so I was willing to take it in any, any condition. So, but now it's signed and now I. Now it's it a, now it needs to be put in a frame somewhere. Yeah, I have a lot, almost every album literally that I have is signed by him. Um, so at this point I should just like frame them all, but yeah. I at least like to listen to them. So it's like one of those yeah, things cool. like you don't want to. Buy them, buy them. You know, put them away. But yeah, I mean, that, those are my picks, kind of basic, but I mean. I'm sure we all love those records, so. That's right. That's right. Before we move on to Martin, Butch, what are you bourboning tonight? Uh, good old Taconic Distillery, but it's their, um, their Mezzanura cask, so Japanese oak, if you can see oh, that there. This man. happens to be my favorite one. They don't, they don't uh, produce this a lot, so I have to make this bottle last. Yeah, you go. down to the bottom there, Butch. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we got we got about an hour to go, so you never know, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Martin, what do you got? Okay, so uh, so I had a hard time with the bottom of the list. I mean, my my two and one are absolutely uh, unnegotiable. They're way at the top of the list. Everything else is fighting it out way way down at the bottom. And and frankly, I don't know if we're talking tens here. We're talking eights and nines kind of thing. So uh, so well, I mean, some tens, but let let's start with this one. So um, so for number five, um. Let's go with the Dictators, Go Girl Crazy. Um, so the first Dictators album, love it to death. There's there's old handsome dick there. Um, this is, uh, they only made three albums, right? And then they re reformed later on. But this is this is a, a heavy album. It's funny. It's a New York album. It's got the next big thing on it. The cover of I Got You, Babe. Uh, Master Race Rock was a heavy one on here. The cover of California Sun. Two Tub Man's funny. Um, you know, the pictures of them all sitting in their bedrooms there in the back and uh, handsome Dick with his, you know, wrestling jacket and all that. Um, just love this album to death. I mean, it's probably my least favorite of the the, the first three Dictators albums, but I but I still love it. It, it. it was always fairly rare at the time came out on Columbia or CBS. Uh, yeah, Columbia or CBS. Epic. Ah, epic. Yeah, because there's Epic in Columbia, right? Uh, epic 1975. Um, so that was a tough one. This was a tough one as well, but Queen Night of the Opera, I'll go with next. So that's my number four. Uh, love it to death. Loved it when it first came out. So much variety on it. Bohemian Rhapsody just changed. I mean, it was literally the greatest song ever written when, when that came out, remember? It was just a, just a massive thing, but it's got the heavy ones on it too. Death on Two Legs, Prophet Song. Um, you know, Sweet Lady was cool too. I'm in love with my car for the heavy stuff. Um, but yeah, just a, obviously a classic album. Great Queen album. Love um, of My Life is on that one too, right? What's that one? Love of My Life oh, on yeah. that one. I believe so, yeah. Yep. Great song. Yeah. Too. That's an excellent, yeah. excellent album in there. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know the lazing on a Sunday afternoon for the twenty stuff and thirty nine for the uh, for the Brian folky stuff, right? Good mm -hmm. company for another kind of almost twenties one, right on here, where you, which confused everybody about Queen, right? But um, all right, so uh, so for my number three, had to go with Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent, the first one, Love it, um, you know, got this as a new release as a kid and loved the modern heavy metal on here things like storm Troopin and oh. motor city madhouse uh specifically but then it had the sort of aerosmith get your wings kind of songs on it like queen of the forest and uh, where you been all my life i always associated this with get your wings for some reason i don't know why um it just always had that same sort of more stripped down sound before you get to toys in the attic kind of thing um and stranglehold of course is his biggest song but ah it's slow it's not my favorite i get in arguments about that one all the time <laughs> just what the doctor order i love um snakeskin cowboys i love too great great swagger great recording on it um so the non-negotiables uh absolutely have to go with physical graffiti next um i also made the pilgrimage to uh saint mark's place and there's obviously the uh 
you know, the way that it's got the whole die cut thing going with it, right? I've, I've often called this or called it, and then I can never forget that I wrote this, but I believe I, I, I basically call this the, uh, the aircraft carrier of all, uh, of all rock albums. Uh, it's just a, a majestic, by far my favorite Zeppelin. It's a double, no filler, lots of variety. It's one of the heavier Led Zeppelin albums. Uh, the, you know, the production's kind of that usual Led Zeppelin-y, you know, th this one's very mid-rangey without a lot of distortion, not a lot of highs, not a lot of lows. It's just sort of right, hits you, hits you between the eyes in the middle. So it's not the greatest production in the world, but, um, you know, they, it, it gets the job done and, and the songs are just so amazing across the whole thing. And then absolutely um, my number one, this is the coolest thing I have in my office period, my fully signed sabotage. Um, and I've often called this my favorite album of all time. And I've often called physical graffiti my favorite album of all time. So those, those couldn't be negotiable at all. But as we all know, greatest Aussie singing performance on this, just start to finish quite a heavy album, quite a proggy album two really long songs on it, Megalomania and The Writ. I even now love Super Czar and I even love or like enough Am I Going Insane? Um, but yeah, Symptom, that riff, the thrill of it all, that riff, Hole in the Sky, the production's just crushing on it. It's so strange and foreign and druggy and scary uh, for, for a Sabbath album. It's just probably one of their most bizarre albums, I, I imagine, as well. But yeah, I've often, like I say, called this my favorite album of all time. It's usually the first one that comes to mind. Uh, so there you go. Ooh, Those are my great five. Choices. Great good choices. Time. All right, Steve. I am up. I am up. All right. So I had put Nugent in my top five, but since uh, Martin had picked it, I will mention it wasn't my top five. My number five coming in is going to be Leonard Skinner's Nothing Fancy. Uh, Skinner's one of my favorite bands. Uh, like a lot of Southern rock, especially in the summertime, I can always listen to Skinner, the Allman Brothers, Outlaw, stuff like that. And uh, of course, Cyanide Special, On the Hunt is on that album, Whiskey Rock and Roller. It's just, a, it's just a great album, and that's my number five. Moving on to number four, Sydney already mentioned this, but hey, this is my top five also. Aerosmith, Toys in the Attic. I, I'm going by stuff that back, if I went in the time capsule, which I pray I could do right now to go back to 75, because I want nothing <laughs> to do with 2021 right now. Get out of here. But uh, number four. Number four is Aerosmith, Toys in the Attic. These albums are albums that I listened to the most back in those days, I'm going to say. And, of course, uh, I agree with her about You See Me Crying. I was listening to this out back. I was doing some work outside this afternoon, and that's just such a great song, Round and Round. Of course, Sweet Emotion is on this album. The title track, Toys in the Attic, is one of their best and heaviest songs. And uh, that's my number three. Uh, number four, rather. Number three is going to be Rush, Fly By Night. There's actually two Rush albums that came out. In that is true, yep. I think Rush of Steel. Yeah. Rush of Steel also came out that year, but I'm going to I'm gonna lean with Fly By Night. I'm going to let Pete have one Rush album, at least. Uh, Very nice. Uh, of course, the album from Head to Start, I could listen to over and over again. You know, starting off with Anthem and Best I Can and By Torn a Snow Dog. And Torn a Snow Dog. It's fucking great. That's a great, great album. Uh, uh, moving on to number two, I'm going with the epic Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here. Another album I probably listened to more than anything on this list except for number one. Would Shine On You Crazy Diamond, Welcome to the Machine, Have a Cigar, and it, all the parts of... Uh, shine on you and it's just a great relaxing epic album of pink floyd and my number one i'm gonna be uh, the same as martin i'm not gonna change it around black sabbath sabotage my favorite black sabbath album and no uh chris it wasn't never say die that's not my favorite but i know i like to that's hurt good. you but uh, of course, uh, to me, it's, an, it's a masterpiece from start to finish. It just fits and like Ozzy goes insane on the, on the last song with, you know, Megalomania, uh, Am I Going Insane, which goes into that writ where there's just some the maniac screaming his lungs off. And you remember, I remember having that as a 14 year old kid with headphones. And it was like, what the hell is going on here? But of course, his heaviest stuff too, Hole in the Sky, Symptom of the Universe. Stuff that he couldn't sing for 20 years now. 
or 30 years probably right well, 40, 40 years yeah, yeah. <laughs> 40 years maybe but uh just the best stuff uh we're not doing honorable mentions this time around we're gonna go back and wrap around for that uh, are we yeah. yep okay i only got a couple because everybody's gonna cover them anyhow but uh cool so there we are oh, and i didn't use my props i have them here that's how out of oh, you're slacking steve look at there's sabotage you gotta show off the goods there's toys, there's toys in the attic and there's fly by night and i don't have the ted nugent or the skinner record sitting here for some reason they're up at work cool all right chris all right very good i'll uh, i'll make mine quick uh, i've limited props because i couldn't find a bunch of stuff like i i was absolutely convinced that I had to sabotage that new four disc box set, which really is a total ripoff because it's only like. Oh yeah, I have it. It was in my. It was here for like ever, and now when I went in the garage to grab some props, I'm like, oh, I don't have to worry about that because I have sabotage in my room, and I come back, read these other things, and I'm like, fuck's the sabotage. So well, <laughs> Naomi came over, took it back. He might have that, that bastard. So uh, I lost it, but I have it somewhere. But that, that's my number one. Uh, number two, uh, Scorpions Entranced. Uh, yeah. You know, as, as a kid, uh, I, I got into the, you know, class, not the classic, but the, the popular Scorpions records, uh, I guess, you know. And then uh, I didn't listen for a little while to the, uh, the earlier stuff. And then I started with Entrance and I was just blown away. And you know, of course, I've now completely flip flopped. Uh, you know, I, I love all the Scorpion stuff, but I'll take the the Uli John Roth and sure. of course the debut with Michael Shanker over the the later stuff. Uh, this one I have the original uh, TNT cover. Uh, I have the pressing that's a gatefold that says TNT, uh, but I don't know where it is. It's somewhere, and I don't want to look for it. But uh, I guess the U.S. version is High Voltage. It's my favorite ACDC record. Excellent, uh, if I overlooked. Just, just filled with classics, uh, and then I, I wanted to pick. Uh, not that I wanted to. I mean, I do love these records. Uh, I could not find my uh, Jaws soundtrack album from John Williams, uh, but I did grab. Uh, it's in the kitchen. My new Quint Jaws action figure. Uh, it's you know one of those. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, it won an Oscar. I mean, you know, I'm not a musician, but like those couple notes, you know. Uh, name me another song that a couple notes could literally be the most terrifying thing you ever heard. Can't do it. Um, Can't do it. Exactly yeah. why I've never seen the movie. Oh, never man. seen Jaws. Oh, wow. Really? Never seen Jaws. That's really? crazy. So we got here a guy who's never owned Rumors and a guy who's never seen Jaws. Man. What the hell? Yeah. I don't. I think I first up. I don't. Think I don't Star Wars. How do you avoid it? Yeah, I mean, I watched it again on TV the other day. I mean, I I, I, I watch it uh, four or five times a year. I, mean, I watched kid, those once or twice. Being yeah. a kid, when that came out that summer, like you said, you you heard those notes. You knew exactly what it was. You heard how scary it was. And <laughs> I, I wanted You're nothing scared. to do with it. And uh, then as I got older, you that realized, was the complete opposite. You can see how silly. This, you can see that it's not real, but it's like it's gone. Uh -huh. Just like you were saying before, it's been so long. It's like ah. <laughs> no, that's that's true. I mean, and and I, I think that definitely is a thing. It, you know, you got to catch these things at a, at a certain moment and. Uh, my my last one, Pete. You oh, and I were just uh, you and I were just talking about this. This is uh, from the band Goblin, uh, Italian seventies prog oh. rock superstars, and uh, their Profondo Rosso soundtrack for the uh, oh. masterpiece from Dario Argento, Deep Red. Wow, and, uh, these guys are uh, uh, they they worked a lot with Argento. And I think this was the first collaboration, and man, just a fucking a, a perfect soundtrack for uh, for an amazing horror movie masterpiece, which. Here's a plug. Pete and I will be talking about, is that next week or this week? This week. This Very week. Good. That's exactly what I said. This week on the Monsters Den, right here on Sea of Train. Wow, what a, what a plug there, Pete. There you go. See that? Uh, Chris, yeah. uh, are you sure that's a Quint action figure? It's not a Christopher Kishka action figure. because I No. The I, I hear Chris Kishka <laughs> does dress up like this from time to time. Oh, every day. Every day. <laughs> but yeah. So, Chris, now that you mentioned Goblin on the show, we're going to get all these people asking, Pete, when are you and Chris going to rank the catalog of Goblin? Oh, yeah, we can do that. Do. That's, that's another thing. We'll put that on the list. There you go. That would make sense why Orange Goblin made it Orange Goblin. Yes. Oh, for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One of the worst <laughs> names ever. Orange Goblin that or band. Goblin? That, that, that's an awful name. Orange like, Goblin, yeah. Green Goblin, Spider-Man would show up. Yeah, well, Green Goblin exactly. is really, Orange Goblin's Green not. Goblin because... Uh, yeah. Or hobgoblin, either you know. 
yeah, a lot of goblins also taken. Too. Yeah, a lot of goblins <laughs> out there. A lot of goblins. <laughs> There's also that band Goblin Cock, but that was taken, I guess. So Goblin Cock. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably one that Ryan would like. No, that's not one that I Ryan would like, Steve. But I will vouch that it's a real band. I can confirm that. <laughs> Adult penis. Oh, jeez. There we go. <laughs> All right, Ryan, what do you got for us? All right, well, uh, you know, when you said 75, I'm like, man, I don't know a single, I couldn't think off the top of my head of a single album. So I had to do some uh, Google research. Wow. And, uh, yeah, no, there was a, there's a lot of good albums that came out. So I got a collection. So the first one, my number five, uh, hasn't been mentioned yet, but it was, uh, I think pretty much everyone here knows this. It is the second Bad Company album, Straight Shooter. Wow, it's on my um, list. Good one. <clears throat> good one. I mean, to me, it's just a continuation of the first album. It's very similar in sound and style. But, you know, Good Love and Gone Bad, Feel Like Making Love, A Shooting Star, which is like, you know, more of a ballad song, one of my favorite Bad Company songs. Nothing fancy, just good bluesy 70s hard rock, you know. Oh, Rogers. Great. They're really good. Uh, number four is my favorite album from a band that has about 400 billion albums, but I'm going to go with this one. That is... Hawkwind, or oh, nice the time. That band. The uh, last one with Lemmy before Lemmy was uh, fired, kicked out, quit, uh, left at a bus stop, wherever it was. And, uh, <laughs> would go on the up in Canada bit. somewhere, right? Was it up in Canada? I think. Yeah, I, I believe. Trying to get so, through yeah. the border. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, this. I mean, it's just you know, it's to me just classic Hawkwind. Uh, Salt and Battery, Wizard Blows Horn, Standing at the Edge, Spiral Galaxy, uh, with a number after it, which I'm not going to read out. Uh, Oh, great album, really good. I love that artwork too. Yeah. Uh, uh, the whole lot, the lyrics are all based on. I think actually Michael Moorcock, the sci-fi author, wrote most of the lyrics. Uh, it's just classic psychedelic, you know, old Hawkwind. Love it. Uh, next one, I'm going with a live album since I did not mention him the last couple of times. But this is one of the bands which has quite a few good live albums. Uh, I don't know if this is my favorite from them. The early '80s one might be my favorite, but I don't know. This might be tied with it. The cover is definitely iconic, and that is Blois de Cold. I knew that was finally. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Butch. Uh, Thank you. I actually, I went to that church a couple uh, couple months ago. It's over yes, in. Uh, Remember the pictures. What a great yeah. what a great name for an album. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that church is still there. It's in a very ritzy part of Westchester County, about an hour north of New York City. Uh, and this is just full of classics from their first couple albums: Subhuman, Harvester of Eyes, The Red and the Black, uh, Last Days of May, Emmy Two Sixty Two. Great production. It's got that classic 70s live album where it's kind of raw, kind of more fa- a little more upbeat, a little more aggressive than the studio stuff, which is what you always wanted from live albums back then. You know, you didn't want like a verbatim copy. You wanted a little more uh, piss and vinegar. And uh, this album's got it. Great, great live album. Bucks Boogie. Bucks Boogie, yeah. Mm-hmm. With this day, he always does that when they, when they play live. He always throws I that out. Him. He's, he's just too cool. I love Buck Dharma. <laughs> Fuck is the fucking best. Uh, so my number one is fixed, but the first four, like uh, Martin said, were kind of fluid. So uh, I'm looking like, man, what else came out in 75? And this album came out in 75. Uh, Budgie, Bandolier. Wow, Great nice. Really good. First song on this album, uh, Breaking All the House Rules. Great song. And that's heavy as hell. That's, that, that is just a straight up like proto speed metal song. You know, it's got that chugging guitar. It's heavy. The bass is like this thick, powerful bass sound. It's great. And the album's also kind of weird. It shifts into like, you know, more acoustic stuff. Kind of, you know, I wouldn't say it's my favorite uh, Budgie album, but it's up there. Uh, definitely top three. Artwork's classic, of course. Uh, so that's good. And of course, the number one, uh, this was as soon as I remember, I just came out in 75. It couldn't be anything else. Got to be Sabotage. Woo! Uh, I don't know if it's my favorite. I think it's probably tied with Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, Master Reality. But they kind of all shift. But like you guys said, it's definitely the weirdest one. You know, you just wonder how much uh, cocaine was involved. In <laughs> lots, um, lots, not an insignificant amount of cocaine, oh, you know, or like trash bags worth, like that scene in Heavy Metal when they bust out the uh, thing, spread it all over the floor. That's probably what these guys were doing before they uh, recorded half of this stuff. But yeah, this is a obviously a perfect album. It's heavy as fuck. Uh, it's amazing. You guys already said everything there was to say about it, so I'm going with Black Sabbath, Sabotage. Cool, nice, nice. All right, Butch and uh, Butch will have Lynn's picks as well. Yeah, well, as normal, I found a way to cheat. <laughs> so with that in mind, this Toys in the Attic was on my list. It's been mentioned a bunch, so I'm taking it off, but yeah. I'll, I'll mention it. Physical Graffiti was, of course, and it's late again, was, uh, was mentioned, but that comes off too. 
I'm really cheating. I've gotten really good. This <laughs> one was coming. <laughs> I've talked about this a lot lately, so this is coming off, but it's, it's really on, but it's coming off just because I've talked about it a lot lately. So with it's that in mind. T- it's a top 10, right, Butch? It's a top 10. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had to cheat somehow. Um, one, uh, I don't know if I want to, I want to give you one, Pete. So I'm going to, I'm going to slide that one. I'll, I'll keep that one for you. Although I might've been on my list too, but so I'll start here. Kiss Alive. Wow. I forever looked that one. This oh. was, uh, the wiffle ball soundtrack of my childhood. <laughs> yes. Growing up and playing in my friend's backyard and his brother taking this big speakers and shove them in the window and being like eight or nine years old. Um, and at you know, current when when that came out so um yeah playing with a ball in the back and listening to that over and over and over uh, memories i'll never forget and ace freely's uh, ace freely and punky meadows and angel again two reasons i ever wanted to pick up a guitar for sure so gotta have him in there um when i was 10 years old for christmas my mom got me three trial albums so for earth below with James Duar, I always say Duar, Duar, however you want to say it, but uh, who is still one of the greatest singers that gets no credit and never gets mentioned. Uh, sing, a phenomenal singing bass player, but I love his voice so much. He's, he's right up there for me with Steve Marriott, but Trower is just so badass on this record. His tone, my God, it's, it's just Trower. What do you I got? like that album better than Bridge of Sighs, actually. That's my favorite Trower studio album. I got to tell you, to be honest with you, I didn't even get Bridge of Sighs until I was in my 30s. I, I knew that. I knew Bridge of Sighs and I knew Dare of the Eagle. And I'm like, I'll get it at some point. And I just never hurried up and got it. But it's great. But yeah, I'm, I'm so much more familiar with that than, than Bridge of Sighs for sure. But did you say when you were 10 years old, your mom got you three Trower albums? Yes, she did. I think that's the coolest thing I've ever heard. I think so too. Cool. Cool. I think so. And honestly, can you see it? If you can, if I can get the glit, oh, you're never going to be able to see it. But my mom, where the hell is it? I can barely see. You can't see it. No, you can't see it. But I'm, my mother wrote on the back here, my name, 122577. Nice. So she got uh, Four Earth Below, Live, and In City Dreams. Nice. Those are the three. And you can imagine being 10 years old trying to tell your friends about this guy, Robin Trower. Robin? Isn't that a girl? It's like, no, it's a guy. Guitar, he's awesome. 25 years later, oh, man, I'm in a Trower now. It's like, Jesus Christ. I only tried to tell you when I was 10. <laughs> um, so that's, so where am I now? Is that one? <laughs> now that I cheated? <laughs> I think that was your four. That, <laughs> that was my four, okay. Um, UFO Force It. Nice. nice. Michael Shanker is just off the charts on this one. And this is just, I, I think this is the heaviest studio record that they ever did, honestly. Let It Roll, Shoot, Shoot. I mean, this kid's Mother Mary is like his lights out. Lights out's not on it, but, you know, lights out anyway. Um, I, Shanker, even before he was in his prime, just phenomenal. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with me cheating. I'm all messed up, but I have two more. So I don't even know where I'm at. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, Back. Jeff Beck, blow by blow. Yep. Stole this from my cousin. <laughs> this and wired. Um, actually, didn't, he let me have him. I just never gave him back. But that's why this is in perfect condition. Um, one of the greatest instrumental guitar albums ever recorded. Yep. Can't, can't go wrong with that. And gee, what, what could be my number one from 1975? Come on. Ben Lizzie, I bet. Ben Lizzie fighting. Wow, I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I uh, got Mr. Gorm to sign that when I met him one time there. Nice. Cool. Um, yeah, this has my favorite Thin Lizzy song of all time. Freedom song is always my favorite song. It always chokes me up every time I hear it. I don't know why. There's something about that song. But this is just, as far as I'm concerned, this is where the real Thin Lizzy was really, really, really born. Nightlife was just about the Nightlife. It's a good album. This is a great album. Um, so Thin Lizzy fighting of my uh, top five that was eight. <laughs> and uh, so, and then with Lens, um, 
she would probably try to change some now that she's at the end and everyone has mentioned all of her picks except for one. Actually, I, except for two, really. Um, she's got Queen Night of the Opera. Yeah. Um, Pete probably gonna might steal this one from Pete. This was on my honorable mentions list. Foghat Fool for the City. So Lonesome, uh, Lonesome Dave, and there you go. Lonesome Dave and, and Rod Price, one of my favorites. Um, she has one on here that's wrong, so I'll, I'll go back to that. I had to correct her and tell that I was actually 76. She's got uh, Grand Funk Railroad caught in the act. Okay. Yep. Um, she's also got Kiss Alive and Dress to Kill on here, too. Yep. And then she also has uh, Physical Graffiti. But the one that she had that was wrong, she has Dreamboat Annie. Because Dream, Hearts Dreamboat Annie was released in Canada in 75, but it was released oh. in the States in 76. So technically, I guess it's the 75, although... We couldn't have got it till 76. So, yeah, it was actually on Wikipedia's list for 75, but uh, yeah, yeah. If you look deeper, it'll right, probably well. say Canadian release. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Close enough. Well, Martin's in Canada. So, yeah, yeah, Martin could have. Yeah, been Martin had it in the 75. Yeah, yeah I, I had no idea it came out in 76. It was on my honorable mentions as yeah. well. So, yeah. All right. Well, my all my five already got mentioned, but I'm going to stick with them anyway. And then yeah. uh, I'll, I'll throw some stuff out of my honorables afterwards that uh, hasn't been mentioned so far. So uh, my number five is Forset by UFO. And this was a last minute change. I had Robin Trower at number five. Then I saw, oh, but wait, the UFO album came out. So that, that edges it just a little bit for me. Well, uh, you, Night at I the hope Opera. You put in the one that I saved for you. What's that? I hope that you get the one that I saved for you. Well, I mean, all might have been mentioned so far, so oh, probably, no. I probably have it in my honorables. But you definitely uh, have it in your honorable. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Night at the Opera, number four, number three, Kiss Alive. Yeah. Which I was shocked nobody oh, mentioned yeah. until we got all the way to to Butch. I was like, holy cow. Uh, number two is Sabotage by Black Sabbath. Easily an album that I think back when I first got into Sabbath back in the late seventies, this was kind of a weird album for me, and I didn't like it as much as I have oh. like over the last couple decades, this is now becoming like, you know, a top five Sabbath album for me. Uh, but number one, it's got to be Physical Graffiti. I mean, this is just like the greatest double album of all time. It's just amazing top to bottom. And it exemplifies everything that is so great about Led Zeppelin to me. Uh, I don't understand. I talk to people all the time who are like, ah, that album is too bloated. It should have been a single. It's all leftover stuff. And I'm like, what? what? Wrong. Like, wrong yeah right it's like no way it's it's greatness great. all throughout it i mean so much that's great about zeppelin is on that album so uh yeah so those are my five so uh we'll circle wow. back around for if everybody has any uh honorable mentions sydney um correct me if i'm wrong um but did didn't the first or not i guess maybe self-titled the richie blackmore's rainbow come out in 75 yep. yeah, how does nobody oh. say that all right so that's not because you're saying it right now yeah, that's <laughs> crazy i was like i for some reason i was thinking it was 76 and then i was like i thought it was your tongue and then as we were going through this i was like so it definitely is because nobody said it and then i just looked it up yeah. and i was like no that was 75 yep. so i'm a little shocked that chris or Ryan. i was gonna but um then i couldn't find oh, the cd and you couldn't find the CD. yeah you needed the prop <laughs> i mean so i mean that album come on so that's definitely an honorable mention um i was also gonna uh say young americans by david bowie it's definitely not one of my all-time favorite bowie albums um but i mean young americans is a great song fame is on that one um that was kind of when he was getting in his little like i don't know like studio 54 kind of vibes um, so, um and that was actually recorded um what's it called here and where I, where I lived at Sigma Sound Studios um, in Philadelphia. And it's really cool because with that album, there's this woman named Patty Brett who lives here. And she was like one of like what they call the Sigma kids who was uh, the group of teenagers who would stand outside Sigma Sound Studios every day while David was recording. And at the end of the recording process, he invited them all in to listen to the album before it was ever released, That's which is cool. like sick. She, and she it's really cool because she does this um, thing in Philly called Philly loves Bowie week every January around the time of his birthday and passing. Um, and so I've met her a couple of times and she's like the coolest. I'm like, man, I wish I was you in 1975 when you got to do that. But um, I was thinking uh, that one, um, God, what else? I had a, I had a list here. I know it was things that other people mentioned. Night at the Opera is definitely one that was on my honorable mentions list. Um, Love of My Life is one of my favorite Queen songs ever. It's just like, Nothing, I don't know. There's not many pieces of music that gets me as emotional as 
love of my life. Yeah, um, really. It's crazy. Um, and yeah, I mean, straight shooters, a great record, pretty much agree with you guys on a lot of what you said, but those are like the, the three biggest in my honorable mentions. Cool. Martin. All right. So I had a uh, Armageddon, the one and done band, right? Oh, Sounds like great Budgie. Choice. Yeah. Uh, hell yeah. Louie and Keith Ralph and Bobby Caldwell, right? Crazy, weird. Underrated classic. Thing. Yep. Interesting bit of a story about this one, Ian Hunter's debut. So I went and played this to make sure. And then I realized, you know what? I like Overnight Angels better and Short Back and Sides better. And You're Never Alone with a Schizophrenic better. And uh, all the good ones are taken better. So I figured, nah, I can't put Ian on here. And, uh, you know, Pete and I have bonded over the idea that neither of us are big Mott the Hoople fans, but I'm a huge Ian Hunter solo fan. I love these four or five records in a row. And then the one that really almost made my list was the first tubes, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, love the first tubes. And, uh, you know, this was one of the rare, not very heavy albums that that we were all into as kids at the time. Right. Because of white punks on dope and whatever. And then I also had on my list status quo on the level and uh, ZZ Top Fandango. And uh, I had Foghat as well. I had Brian Eno, Another Green World. I had Thin Lizzy Fighting. There you go. I was waiting for you to mention that ZZ Top album, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing as we just did that ZZ Top episode. Yeah, last week. for sure. Had it written down. <clears throat> Greatest side of ZZ Top of all time, right? Yeah, yeah. They keep getting left off of all of our main lists. I feel like the last like five episodes that we've done, like it's like right, right at the damn, end. Of, like, ZZ Top, how can we forget <laughs> it? Oh, it's the last band I always in the feel bad. I know, yeah. right? In the alphabet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Steve. All right, I'm going to go with Bachman Turner Overdrive, Four Wheel Drive, which I think back in those days, I might have listened to more than any of these things. I was one of the first great rock bands I was uh, introduced to. Uh, great from, choice. Uh, friend of mine's brother. Uh, of course, I had ZZ Top Fandango down. I had Nazareth there, the dog, who no one's mentioned so far. Oh, yeah, that is a good one. Um, Jeff's Bro Tall, Minstrel in the Gallery. Uh, Grateful Dead, Blues for Allah. Yep. Wings, Venus, and Mars. <clears throat> I had that written down too. Yep. All right. I don't want to take up everybody's, but of course, I had Richie Blackmore's Rainbow Dad as honorable mention. Of course, a lot that were mentioned already. Queen, of course, Zeppelin, Physical Graffiti. And it was a great year for rock and roll. For, <laughs> for Berta Flack, killing me softly with his love, also. <laughs> I, bet you, I bet you Chris doesn't have that record. Either. Yeah, oh, that's a no there, Steve. You have the, do you own Queen, Queen of Night of the Opera? That's a no. Wow, I, I thought oh, you got them on another one, Sydney. See, I helped you now. Since when they pick a new form. Yeah, I saw Queen with uh, Paul Rogers, and I really liked when he did Bad Company songs. <laughs> oh my God. Chris, Chris would be perfect for the homework show, you know, because of these. <laughs> oh, oh, don't you worry. Right? I, I, I've yeah. got, I've got, uh, I've got a plan for him. Oh, yeah. Don't you worry. Let's get him to listen to rumors. <laughs> <laughs> I'll invite him over my bag and I'll put him on. Ryan, you don't like Queen either, do you? It's not my favorite band. Okay. I, I, I got that, no, that's uh, a no. I take that as a no. <laughs> it's yeah, not no my favorite. They're but, solid. Yeah. They're I, solid. I mean, if someone puts Queen on, I got no problems with it. Am I going to go out and like hunt down their albums at this point? Probably not. But uh, yeah, I got no problems with them. They're just not a band I'm really in. I'm really trying to dodge this, like, uh, get around this question. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, if you really don't like Queen, just say, hey, I think Queen sucks. I mean, that's people. I don't think that's I don't, you don't know. You have to be politically correct. There's the Hudson Valley Squares here. You can say you hate something. No, I, I don't think, uh, I don't hate them. I'm just not a big fan. You know, I'm kind of like, eh, you know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Chris, you got any honorables? Uh, the only one that I could think of is uh, Come Taste the Band from Deep Purple. That's the one I was waiting for, Pete. That's what I was waiting for. You, you thought know, Pete that. might have had that on the list. I, I thought did. That's I, I like it. it. I don't love it, but there is some some really good material on there. Oh yeah, Harry Bowen kills on that. It's strong. It's a strong. I, I'm shocked that he didn't have uh, Jeff Rotel on his list. Well, here's the thing. I forgot to bring it up before. So because I did 1975 on the Prague show last week, I specifically didn't want to pick any of the stuff that I picked oh, okay. that, that are more in the Prague because I had I think I had uh, Mitchell in the gallery. I had Caressa Steel. Um, oh boy, what else did I have? I don't. Hold on, or Mask by Kansas. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, yes, yeah, I, and I had Song for America. Too. I had Song for America. I, I had Gentle Giant Freehand, Jethro Tull Minstrel in the Gallery, Kansas Song for America, Rush Caressa Steel, and Return to Forever Romantic Warrior. 
Oh no, uh, I no, I'm sorry, no mystery. So those are those are my projects camel? for next week. So. Okay. Uh, that camel album that year too, Snow Goose. Oh, that's that great. Good. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good one. Yeah. All right, Ryan, you got any honorables? Well, I'd say the the camel and the Kansas albums you just mentioned. Uh, it's been mentioned, but it's it's actually my favorite uh, Pink Floyd album. Wish you were here. I just I just it, it resonates with me. I like a lot of the albums they did in that time frame, but uh, this one I really really like. Uh, but you already mentioned obviously, but I think it's one of the best. Thin Lizzy <laughs> album. I'd agree that it's uh, the time when they really became Thin Lizzy. Uh, I don't know. For my money, any top five list of Thin Lizzy songs has to include Ballad of a Hard Man. That oh. is a Macy song. It's almost kind of like Motorhead ish. It's very like. And I don't know if they've ever done that live. Uh, I never searched for a live footage, but I've never seen a live I, footage of that song. But I've never yeah. come across the audio at all. It's a it's a great song. A great and riff. uh, uh I'm a, this one's tough. I pick, I saved it for a uh, honorable because it's not one of my favorite albums by them, even though they're one of my favorite bands. Uh, it's the second to last album with David Byron, and it's uh, Return to Fantasy by Uriah Heep. Nice. Uh, so it's got some really good songs on it. Like the title track is great. Beautiful Dream is great. But then they were also kind of going in like this more mellow or AOR direction, which they did well. But when I think of Uriah Heep, it's like not what I think of. I think of like Magician's Birthday, you know, Look at yourself, demons and wizards, like that classic crunchy Hammond organ. So they they kind of I don't know they didn't suck, but they, they went on a couple albums for a while. There were, were kind of like some really good songs and some songs you generally skip over. And this album uh, has a bit of that, unfortunately. But it's it's overall a pretty solid album. Uh, so and the title track is just amazing. Return to Fantasy. I think it's one of the best songs they ever did. So that's why I wanted to save it for an honorable mention. But yeah, that's all I got. I think that album and the one that came after it, High and Mighty, which were the two last with David Byron, both suffer from the same thing. And uh, they, yeah. they have a couple of really good songs and the rest of it's kind of like, hmm. It's like, I feel like they were just struggling for a while. Yeah, Once they got John Law and I think uh, Firefly, that kind of stepped it up again a little But Yeah, it's not a bad album. It's just, no, it's I'm not, not if I mentioned my top, I don't even know if I put it in my top 10 Uriah Heaps, but I like them so much that I'd still consider it a good album, you know? Yeah. You know, that, considering cool what you got any left yeah I'm, I'm going off the reservation this here's some that uh that no one mentioned at all and uh some of them everyone will know and some of them only a couple of us might know um elton john captain fantastic and the brown dirt cowboys so wow. there's a big one right there yep. um gary wright's dream reaver that uh, yeah reaver good choice yeah i've uh i've gotten into spooky tooth a lot this last couple of years and uh obviously everyone knows us on dreamweaver but that's a great record um here's one completely from left field uh the band ambrosia their oh, debut wow. is fantastic oh yeah it is nothing even the stuff that even the pop stuff that they did in the 80s is fantastic I, for what it is is great great stuff but this as i know pete i know we've talked about this a little bit in the past that it's like a they're a prog band in the early 70s yeah so 75 that's that is a great great album um <laughs> i love these two parliament released two albums in 75 chocolate city and mothership connection oh yeah mothership connection you're mothership in the funk at all great <laughs> two two absolute classics released the same year um and then two that i love a lot well one i love a lot and the other one I love a song, um, Bebop Deluxe Futurama because I'm a huge Bill Nelson fan. And then one of my top I've gone on record saying one of my top three guitar solos of all time is from Don Felder and the Eagles on the song One of These Nights. Nice. And one of these nights is an Eagle album from '75 too, so I'll give that some some credit too. But the solo on that song is just completely masterful. You can hum every single note in it; it just fits perfectly. It's a great solo and it's a great song. Take it to the limit on that record. It's also a great, fantastic song. Good album, actually. <clears throat> it's a really solid album. Yeah, that's all I got. Oh, and the and the Moxie debut. Moxie's uh, debut was in '75 too. Yep. So I had I had 25 listed in my honorable mentions. Oh. I'm thinking, ah, there, there's, there's got to be plenty of these that people don't mention. Well, let's see. Uh, the first Journey album. Okay. Really good. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. Katie Lied by Steely Dan. 
Nice. I was just looking at that one. I was looking at the list of Wikipedia. <laughs> and I was all excited. Nobody mentioned Moxie, and then Butch pulled it out. <laughs> ass, I don't, everything else has been mentioned here. So, But the one more that nobody mentioned, and it almost made my top five. It was pretty close. Uh, Equinox by Styx. Mm. Wow. That's a great album. Yeah. 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 I saw the movie, but... Uh... <laughs> Styx out a movie? You don't have that album, right? No, e- Equinox. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a monster. <laughs> no relation. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, but I, I basically everything everybody else mentioned, I had in my uh, honorable mentions here, you know, including Trower and Skinner and Aerosmith, Nazareth, Bad Company, Wings, BTO, Rainbow, nice. Lizzie, Scorpions, Deep Purple, Ted Nugent, Angel, BOC, the whole nine yards. I, I'm still in shock. Steve didn't have uh, physical graffiti in the actual top five. I had it in the top five earlier and I was moving it around. I should. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. It was in my mentions. Yeah, it was top. <laughs> top four. Yeah. Wow. So well, there you have it, everybody. Uh, our favorite albums from 1975 in the comments below. Please uh, give us your top five albums from 1975. Pretty, pretty great year. I don't know if it necessarily tops uh, some of the, like 76 and 77 that we did like a month ago. No. But uh, 75 is pretty damn good, I think. So uh, 78. How yeah, about uh, one more album, War? Can't we? Why can't we be friends? I had that record too. <laughs> There's another, one. There another one. Cool. So uh, let's see. Let's, uh, Martin, what do you got cooking on your end? What's going on with the podcast and uh, all that good stuff, the books and everything? Is that, is that Boy, Nazareth well, cooking yet? We've got, uh, well, st- still waiting for the Nazareth and uh, the Yes to come across. It's going to be another couple of weeks. I will have the Merciful Fate and the Van Halen back in print in about Ooh. two weeks as well. And I've got the Max Webster coming back in print. Uh, cleaned up some typos in that so kind of did a new file in that so the max webster's coming back in print and flaming telepaths my imaginos weird book uh is sold out but that's coming back in print in november and then we've got the contrarians uh our youtube show and then i've got my podcast history and five songs with martin paul nice. there you go Ooh. sydney what's going on metal from the inside yeah so it's been a couple of you know exciting weeks um coming up this week i have a new interview with miles kennedy that's going to be airing um on friday um, which is so cool we talked a lot about his uh new solo record and um to even his work with slash when he got to uh sing with led zeppelin um what's left of led zeppelin um uh, so we discussed that um that's really cool i have some more really awesome um conversations coming up uh, yeah, so as always, metalfromtheinside.com. Um, I also got two guests on my friend Jay Scott's podcast, The Hook Rocks, and we kind of discussed our uh, big four of hard rock and heavy metal. You know, we always talk about the big four of thrash, but uh, mm. we discussed who we think our big four of hard rock and metal are. So uh, I got a guest on his podcast, which is really cool. So you can check that out too. Awesome. Hi. Steve, how's things going to Rock Fantasy? Rock Fantasy is doing good. The store's is uh, pretty busy. Rock Fantasy Files kind of been on a summer recess. So we're going to actually start in. We just did a best, uh, kind of a roast of John McAtee with Incantation last week, which will be airing soon. We also had King Fa- uh, King Fally from Deceased, and those guys did that. I wasn't a part of it, but we're going to try to start getting the channel going as September rolled around. It's really hard to get... Uh, a lot of our folks together and we kind of got a little burned out on it but we plan to come back in september and start doing some more stuff i think we're going to have exodus on and a couple different bands as we move forward everyone in the music industry is also you know i think that a lot of them are going on the road some of them aren't going on the road so it's just been a really trying time for all of us you know yeah no doubt no doubt i, I wasn't on last week's show but i'm still shocked by losing Frank at the chance, I, it just bothers me, and it's yeah. just I just can't believe it. What a what a what a loss for the Hudson Valley and the whole music industry, you know, and the chance. It, it very much sucks. I've known uh, me and Frank knew each other since high school, so you know, over, oh, you were very close. well over thirty years. And uh, but I will say there was a fantastic turnout at the wake and the service. Okay. Uh, I mean the wake the wake itself was ridiculous. <laughs> It was like a 90 minute wait to get in. It was out the building around the corner. And once you got in, you had to go all circle around to come back. It was a, it was a really nice turnout, but yeah, Frank will, will absolutely be missed. I'll be missing my buddy. Yep. No doubt. For sure. For sure. Yep. Butch, yep. how's things going over at the butcher shop? Ah, you know, same shit. I lost control. People in there posting silly shit. 
<laughs> it's fun you know I've, I've got the merch in there and my pillow behind me there and shirts i'm trying to design a hat that i just got told that can't do right now they got to fix some stuff so um just having fun same stuff just talking music same thing we're doing right here if, if no one understands what the, the whole idea of the butcher shop on facebook it's what we're doing right here if you caught any one of us at a bar at the mall, at a store, whatever, and you started talking music, that's exactly what the butcher shop is. It takes on its own life. You're talking about, oh, did you see this show? Did you go to this? You're talking about a band and it just takes over. So it's just a place to, to meet and, and talk music and, and interact with people. I've become best buddies with people that I see every single day. You know, you wake up in the morning waiting to see a post from, you know, such and such yeah. and such and such. So it's uh, it's, a, it's a great place. And I'm, I'm really happy that it's kind of, uh, it's got over 3,000 people involved in the group now, and it's it's been a great place just to bring people together under one common thing, which is music. So uh, I'm, right. I appreciate everybody getting involved and and uh, hanging in there because that's all it is. It's just a big hang. It's a bright spot on my Facebook feed, Butch, because <laughs> I I'm really I took Facebook off my phone. You know, it's a messenger. I can't I can't take it anymore. It's just everybody yeah. fighting and arguing. And when I go on my laptop, when at least seeing stuff, they're still not music. I'm like, yay. <laughs> That's what it's about. No politics, none of that crap. Just yes, having no fun talking music. Yeah. So Ryan, you and I did a show yesterday. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. We did a uh, great little rank of the album show on the English band Pagan Altar, which is, I think, me, the kings of, uh, they were around back in the day, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, just nothing ever came out, you know, just a uh, Record label shit, personal problems, but they didn't get their stuff released until the 2000s, late 90s. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Say, back up. Say that again. So they they were around back in the 70s and 80s. They recorded and wrote all this music. And then just by hook or crook, their music didn't actually, like they released, I think, a tape that maybe a couple people got. And it wasn't until decades later where the stuff actually was like exhumed and it came out. They actually went back in the studio, redid some of it. And all the music started coming out. I think at the earliest was like 98. And they're, they are really, really good English, like kind of Wishbone Ash, little Jethro Tull, Witchfinder General, like a very English kind of heavy metal, weird hard rock folky band. But yeah, this stuff was not available back then. So they're kind of like one of those true lost bands, you know, just do you, lost. Do you know how it came about? I, that's 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 fascinating. How how uh, was it fans that had those old tapes and shit or you know what i can find out because a friend of mine is a good close friend with the band uh it's actually it's a father wow. and son started the band it was alan and uh terry and these guys were father and son the son was the guitarist who i think i mentioned on another show like besides tony iomi he's yeah. probably my favorite english guitarist the guy is just a phenom i remember people, saying something when you said it <laughs> he was uh he was really young when he recorded this stuff way back so they came yeah. back <laughs> yeah they, some of it I think some of the stuff they just exhumed and just released some of the stuff they wrote back then, but they recorded formally in the two thousands and then wow. they put out one final album, but the, the singer Terry passed away like six years ago from cancer. So uh, they got some other guys to come in to sing for them. They did a couple a short tour. I saw them in Montreal. Uh, I saw them in Brooklyn two years ago. Uh, there's an English or sorry, a Massachusetts band called magic circle. It's kind of like a black Sabbathy doomy kind of heavy metal band. Some of those guys stood in and to help them out. And they're, they're great. They're, they're really like a true lost band, you know, never came out back then. But the circumstances of them coming back, like I'm sure some people, maybe they were, I don't know, I'm sure some people had that stuff and they knew about them. But I sure as hell didn't know about them in the 90s. I don't think most people did, you know. What's the name of the band again? Pagan what? Pagan Altar. Yeah. Altar. Okay. It, it's like. That's, that'd be like an Black interesting Sabbath. documentary right there. Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's sure. uh, yeah, it's like Black Sabbath, Wishbone Ash, and Jethro Tull, like kind of a mix okay. of those three, like all spooled up. Seventy. Yeah, very very English band. Cool band though. Uh, the recording's kind of raw. You never had a big Son budget. Bitch. But, uh, yeah, this guy, the guy Alan, is a phenomenal guitar player. Holy shit, he is good. So I think wow. you probably okay. appreciate it for that reason, especially. Yeah, it's good stuff. So that aired yesterday. So if you folks haven't watched it, uh, please go tune in here on the channel. And uh, Chris, Allo, and I are getting set to do the Monsters Den on Thursday. And uh, I just found my Black Sabbath. Sabbath. Of course you did. Oh, right? you found it. Oh, Is that's that what why you said son of a bitch? Was of a bitch? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like fucking there. Ton of a bitch. All I heard is like the whisper of it. 
the way we were all looking we're like oh crap what just happened over at the alley yeah, i was like what is <laughs> oh and, 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 you don't and, have the vinyl version i have to come back no i i don't have that i gotta draw oh the line God, you have to and pete i was message uh, instant message yesterday asking me why i wasn't involved on the show last thursday for david lynch was oh last week you were a david lynch fan Oh, me, me and Portnoy were talking about it that, that show. Remember, he had in the back oh. I could see the, the race red thing. He's like, "Why weren't you on it?" I'm like, uh-huh. "I'm like, what are you talking about?" He's like, "David Lynch was last minute, the top five. I'm like, "I don't know. I wasn't asked." <laughs> Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> oh my god, I almost thought the scout didn't have his dog tonight. Oh, there, oh, there you go. Oh, that dog, that dog washes his face. Yeah, you don't do that. Yeah, Steve, what's wrong with your dogs? You don't wash your face? Yeah, look at Steve trying to steal your thunder. The two funniest moments on this show was the first time we went live and you were trying to figure out the delay. And then the second time was when his dog came up for the first time. Those are like the two funniest yeah, me moments. And you just, me and you couldn't stop laughing. I think you started it with just contagious. I just couldn't stop. I, I just I like how, how not, Steve... Not you start, she's not going to stop. Uh, I like how Steve tried to steal your thunder with his dog, and his dog's having nothing to do, and you brought your dog in and right to it. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm on camera, I'm on it. That's right. <laughs> your dog don't uh, do it? Uh, see, see, Ryan doesn't, doesn't feed the dog or doesn't water it, and he does, oh, uh, he he water it. off the sweat Nobody of his Nobody listen to him. She's that too, Ryan keeps his dog on a low salt diet. He's got to get all the salt <laughs> in right now. Does he water the dog? Salty. Like, does it, does it grow if you water it? <laughs> Uh, like like, like gremlins. <laughs> so back to the monsters then. So Chris and I are going to be ranking our top five Dario Argento films. So uh, Chris, you want to say a little something about that? You've been rewatching all your Argento films. Oh yeah, I mean the you know Argento masterpiece after masterpiece. But you know like like uh, many bands we talk about, really his earliest stuff was the best. I mean. Some of the later stuff is really uh, unwatchable. Yeah, I mean, it's really yeah. Yeah. shit, yeah. to be honest. So, yeah. but the you know the first I don't know 10, 15 years of his career was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, I do want to put a little plug in for uh, this Friday show. So Martin and I will be uh, back together once again Friday morning. Martin, you want to talk about this concept? This actually just kind of came up on the air of our of last week's show. We decided to make a whole episode yeah. out of it. Yeah, I mean, we were ranking the albums of Witchfind, and then I was thinking, you know, I've got my top one here, which is uh, which is Stage Fright, and it's kind of all because of two songs. So we thought, what about those albums that are dragged, kicking and screaming way up the top of your list because of one or two or three songs? And, and when you really, like, in the harsh light of day, look at it, you're not crazy about lots of this album, yet it's way up your list, and it's really only because of those few songs. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Good so idea. we're uh we're gonna be talking all about those. We're each gonna pick five albums where, like Martin says, we we rank them really high, but when we really look at the track list, we're like, yeah, some of this really isn't that good. But there's a couple songs that are just so phenomenal that they wind up being ranked over something that probably top to bottom is is even more strong. Kings so of Metal by Man of War that immediately came to mind. <laughs> and all those fucking still, silly filler songs and some really good tracks on it. Yeah. Which man of war? Kings of Metal. Kings yeah, they, of metal. Kings of metal. Uh, it's a good drinking album. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like, I like not Kings not of the metal. whole album. Not the whole album. I, I, I don't want to go off topic. We're way off topic. We'll talk, we're not talking about the Batman movie now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's why you're yeah, dropping nuclear bombs a mile from the city. I don't know when you guys started mentioning the Green Lantern, uh, no, uh, um, Green Goblin before. I was, I was thinking, uh oh, does Chris We're like those go down spiral. Spiral. <laughs> No, that, that, that those Green Goblin was terrible in, in both Here sets of those Spider-Man movies. They were fucking <laughs> awful. There we go. <laughs> I mean, what's his name has such a great face, and Will you, Defoe? Uh, Defoe, yeah. Willem Defoe has has an amazing creepy face. So what do we do? Let's put him in a Green Goblin mask that doesn't move. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and Green Goblin as a character is is a very frightening ca- character. Uh, makes no sense. So, wasn't that Sam Raimi that did that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he fucked up. He totally fucked, fucked that up. And I don't know if that was him or the studio, but there's all that's a whole nother. He's gonna shoulder the blame for it. Yeah. And then that other one, he had the emo Green Goblin in that other series that only lasted two movies. That was shit. 
I didn't watch that. That guy looked like a fucking pixie from the, the Harry Potter movies. Uh, the Green Goblin's good in the Spider-Man 67 cartoon. Totally. Well, oh, yeah. That's oh, the, the best stuff. That was the blueprint. That's what they should have went with. But I, I, I can watch those cartoons, cartoons all over and over again. Especially that theme song. Here you go, Pete. Almost as good as the Aquaman cartoons. Here comes the Spider-Man. I asked for that, right? Yeah, you did. Start it now Asking you, your favorite that's right. Uh, you guys always deliver. All right, that, that's what's that's the important thing. Yeah, I wish I had the uh, the quick wit of Chris Allen. Sometimes I'm like, how do you come up with this shit on the fly? It's just listen, sometimes it gets funny. me in trouble, so it's not always a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on this place called YouTube. All the damn time. All the damn day. time for Martin Popoff, Steve Keeler, Sydney Taylor in the center square today. Butch Jones, Ryan Scow, and Chris Alloway and Pete Pardo. Good night, everybody. See you next week. Take care. Bye bye.